How's it going everybody? Gunner here and today we're going to be tying up the mini feather craw super simple super sexy four-way jig. Check it out. So I have another crawfish pattern using this pheasant skin and the rump feathers and basically this is just a simplified easier downsized version. That's all this is because I wanted something a little bit smaller uh, for the four weight and I played with the shingle idea and it's sick. So I just want to show you this even though I already have a similar pattern because this is a really cool variation. So let's dive in. Those tungsten beads, they'll hit the, the barb and they'll kind of resist it, but you just gotta turn them so that the slot goes over the barb and then they'll go right in. But I got my bead on there. Again, this is the size four, so I'm gonna lock that bead in place. So I'm gonna put some thread turns up by my hook eye, slide that bead in place, and then take a wrap behind it. Bring it up to the hook eye, some wraps behind, bring it up to the hook eye, some wraps behind. And that's just going to lock that bead in place so it can't slide up there on accident. So because this is a downsized version, I'm just going to simplify it. Because the, the key here is just a simple, suggestive crayfish. Not The bigger it is, in my opinion, the more realistic they need to be. So I'm going to come in with some pheasant tail to do our antenna. And basically I just needed some long fibers to do this and these Pheasant tail feathers are about as long as you're going to get on there. And you don't need that many, probably just three or four, and I'm going to tie them in basically as long as I can, because even a little crayfish got long antennas. Get those guys in place, just like that. Now I'm going to come in and pick out two short, short, short little rump feathers from right here on the pheasant's backside, and I'm going to pair those off to the side as claws. So I got two little feathers here. I don't want these to be that long, so I'm going to come way up here on them. Now the really cool thing about rump feathers and most of this pheasant hide is that the stems run on the same orientation as the feather. So I want to stack this feather so that it's nice and high and tight. And what I can do is simply put it on the side of my hook, catch it, make sure it's right where I want it, add some tension, and it's literally not going to roll or rotate or try to move on you. And then I'm going to take thread wraps forward and backwards so that that feather can't back off. I'm literally going to do the same thing on this side. So these hackle stems, a lot of times when you're trying to tie in like a, a deceiver tail or something, you'll tie those feathers in and they'll want to roll. But the soft hackle stems, they don't do that. And so it's really easy to just pair those on the side, no fuss, and you have perfect claws. So look at that, long antennas using pheasant. Nice little short claws using pheasant. Now we're going to build up this body the same way we did before, which is just palmering rump feathers. But I want this thing to be picky. So I'm actually going to take a pretty long rump feather, even though this is a small, a small little crayfish here. I'm going to take a long rump feather, and then a medium rump feather. Where's medium? Your medium. Give me your medium. And then I'm going to take a short Maybe not super short, but short. So I got my feather selected. I'm going to come in with the long one first. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to tie these in by the tips so that I don't have to use my hackle pliers. Because it literally doesn't matter. So I'm just going to come in and tip tie that, get it caught, and then wrap my thread forward and backwards so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm just going to preen this back as I turn it, and I want those legs to be pretty picky. Nice and buggy profile. And before I get into that marabou section, I'm going to come up and catch that and tie it off. So unlike the bait fish pattern, I don't really want any of that marabou because I want this to look like legs. I want these to be little skinny picky crayfish legs. So don't get too much of that marabou in there because we're going to fill in that carapace silhouette with those shoulder shingle feathers. And then I'm going to take my thread and wrap it back into my tying point so that none of that stem is exposed because if that stem was exposed a tooth could just break that up. So now I have all these picky 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 long rump feathers that literally end about the same place as my claws. So it's a really suggestive buggy fly. Then I'm going to come in with my medium feather and do the same. I'm just going to tip tie it to save time and be easy. Lock that in place. Take your thread forward and back so it can't back off. 
take some light turns here and just control that feather just by preening it. And you might only get like two turns, two and a half turns. That's totally okay. You can see on this one, I got about like half a turn or so of the marabou, and that's okay because I'm moving up closer to the, the front here and those marabou feathers are nice and short. They're just going to make that fly a little bit more opaque. Take that thread back over to where you started. And now here's where we get to the fun part. We're going to take these shoulder feathers, these nice really dark bronze shoulder feathers, and I'm going to take two of them. And you want them really, really short. See if I can get like the two shortest ones here. And I'm literally going to shingle these. And you want it to end basically right where your bend starts. So it's a really short tying point. And just like the, the claws, these will tie in exactly the way you want them to. So I'm just going to get that on the back to the length I want, come up with my thread, put two turns on it, kind of manipulate it. Pull straight down, lock it in place. Put some turns over the top and get up here. And now I have a perfectly flat shingled carapace feather right on the back. Now we're up at the hook eye finally. I'm going to take a shorter rump feather. So this is like more like a medium length rump feather. Just going to catch it on there. And get it in place. Preen it back while I turn it. Out of all of them, if you get some marabou on this one, it's okay because you're just going to fill it up with short feathers and you can always break them. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to get this tied in, catch it, cut it, and then I can come in and literally break out these marabou little short feathers that I don't want. Make sure she's tied in good and tight. Now to get this carapace feather on here, you're right up at the jig hook eye, so it's a little sloppy. But I'm gonna preen it back, so I got nothing but the stem on here. My feathers are staggered, so they don't end at the same place. I'm gonna catch just the stem. You don't wanna get any other feathers in there, or else it's gonna get a little sloppy on you. Get two light turns on it, and now I can literally just pull it into place. Now if you leave it a little shy of where you want it to go, when you add some tension, It'll get pulled right up on there. And then I'm going to be worried, first and foremost, about tying it off. And then I'm going to take my thread and just control that feather with some extra turns right on top. Hit that with a simple half hitch, whip finish, and head cement. And that is a super simple, really buggy, picky, countershaded craw using absolutely nothing but pheasant and it literally takes you know six minutes to tie really cool pattern if that was some head cement get in there so that's the little feather craw super simple right um, again if you want to tie the craw the bugger the little marabou bait fish check out my website I got a, I got the materials all on a page for you guys so that you don't have to worry about trying to find everything in one place you can find them there um, and yeah I hope you tie these up because they're <laughs> they all use the same materials uh, they basically only use one material which is pheasant and then hooks and a bead and some little mylar which you guys probably have anyway uh, and they're just easy they're fun they're natural they're buggy they're picky they're modeled they're everything you'd want in a little suggestive fly for creek fishing for multi-species fishing, for warm water fishing. Uh, and I really hope you check it out. And I hope the video has helped you guys. And um, add these to the four weight arsenal because it's going to be a fun summer. Yeah. Thanks for watching.